This is News 8 at 6. Good evening, I'm John Diaz. And I'm Linda Swinford. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin tonight with the Little League World Series. Davenport Southeast taking the field today in Williamsport. News 8's Corey Cuffler joins us live from Pennsylvania and the game coming down to the wire, Corey. Yeah, Linda and John, all I can... President Biden continues to call for new legislation in response to mass shootings, pointing to the need to protect children from gun violence. Casey Decker with our Verify team looks at the numbers for recent claims the president made about how shooting deaths compared to military casualties and police violence. Good evening, I'm Linda Swinford. And I'm John Diaz. Thanks for joining us at 5. We begin with continuing coverage of the Davenport building collapse. Here's what we know right now. Ten days since the partial collapse in downtown Davenport. Attorneys for two more survivors have filed a lawsuit today accusing the city of Davenport, the building's owner, and other parties for knowingly allowing people to live in an unsafe building. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds is requesting federal assistance for Scott County to help pay for debris removal, demolition, first responders' activities, and technical assistance. The city has not yet set a demolition date. This is the largest community in Henry County, Illinois. That's right, and we are so excited to be here, and yeah. we are bringing you the news live from the Kiwani Historical Society, our studio for the evening. Yeah. And joining us in downtown Kiwani, News 8's Shelby Kluver, who is just around the corner, and also News 8's Chief Meteorologist, James Zahara. Not only are restaurants and businesses seeing an economic impact from the flooding, so are nature preserves and campgrounds. News 8's Joe McCoy is live at Rock Creek Campground and Marina in Comanche and also back in his waders. And Joe, from the looks of it, the water levels look quite high. They are indeed, Linda. And yes, I am back in my waders. And I know it may not look like it, but I'm currently standing in the middle of Rock Creek Campground. Now, I'm 6'3", and the water is now up to my waist. The playground behind me has turned into a water park. All campsites are closed, and valuable revenue is being lost. Now, the campsite is... The Department of Justice is now looking into the situation at USP Thompson after an NPR and Marshall Project report found it to be one of the deadliest federal prisons in the country. Since 2019, there have been five suspected homicides and two alleged suicides at Thompson. There have also been allegations of serious abuses by staff members, including tying prisoners up with shackles. Yesterday, Illinois Congress congressional members Dick Durbin, Tammy Duckworth, and Sherry Bustos announced the DOJ's inspector general will be looking into these concerns. In response, the prison staff union told News 8, quote, we fully support the investigation into the allegations into USP Thompson. Muscatine. An exciting weekend on tap with the return of the 2023 Quad City Air Show. The Air Force Thunderbirds and an F-22 Raptor demo team are just a few of the stars of the show. But one Bettendorf mom has her sights set on her son, who is back home for the air show, living out his dream of becoming a fighter pilot. <laughs> Thunderous jet noise can't drown out this mom's sheer excitement. overseeing her son flying high in the F-22 Raptor, a stealth fighter jet exclusive to the U.S. Air Force. Welcome home, Sammy! That's Captain Samuel Larson, call sign Raz, at 30, the youngest pilot and commander of the F-22 demo team. Uh, but I grew up every summer uh, going to the Quad City Air Show, lived nearby the Davenport Airport, so saw jets flying over the house, and I was immediately hooked. You know, if Sam had to grow wings to fly, I think he would. He's so determined. Cindy Larson says this has been her son's dream as long as she can remember. But Sam was always, you know, when he was very, very little, said, I want to be a fighter pilot, and flying little planes around. And, uh, you know, he would sit outside and watch the jets and talk to pilots, and it was like a whole life thing. And he... He did it. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Was it <Good> fun? <laughs> yeah. Captain Larson is a Bettendorf High School grad who went on to the Air Force Academy and started flying the F-22 back in 2017. As a little four-month-old kid coming to this air show, did you ever think this was going to happen? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. The stars aligned on this one. Oh, yeah. For the Larson family, this air show is a homecoming that's a long time coming. This is really a hometown show. We're all from here, and Sam went to the Quad City Air, air Show every year since he was... Well, every year of his life, basically, until the Air Force Academy. And then he's come back. 
So this is everything. It's, uh, it's pure joy getting to fly here. Uh, it was a dream I always had. Uh, there are a lot of obstacles along the way, a lot of a lot of times where I was uncertain if this was going to happen, and so to be here now, getting to live my dream, uh, it's an absolute thrill. So cool. <laughs> yeah, and it makes so much sense that mom is literally the most excited person there. Yeah, well, yeah. he's got to remain calm, I'm sure. He does, yes, I, that would be a good idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is only the fourth air show nationwide this year that features both the Thunderbirds and the F-22 Raptor demo team shows are Saturday and Sunday at the Davenport Airport. And in writing that story, I learned a new aviation term, John, okay. thrust vectoring. Familiar? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that is 70,000 pounds of thrust from those engines that basically allows them to do all those spectacular maneuvers and aerobatics in the sky. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'll review those notes later. Okay. <laughs> Still ahead, concerts on the course when country music superstars Blake Shelton and Darius Rucker are performing at this year's John Deere Classic. You're watching News 8 at 6. Live from WQAD, News 8 at 5 starts now. Good evening, I'm John Diaz. And I'm Linda Swinford. Thank you for joining us at 5. A new approach to helping the homeless in the Quad Cities. Five housing assistance groups connect with landlords, giving advice on renting to those in need. But as News 8's Jonathan Fong reports, many landlords face challenges when renting to the homeless, and those issues go beyond just paying rent on time. It's new tonight at 5. For many who are homeless, the chance to rent again is a ray of hope. Right now, I, I got a, right now I rented a, a room to a guy that his mother passed away, and uh, he needed a place to go, and he's a good kid, you know, so I mean, I'm helping him out. Why not, why not help people, you know? With the average cost of monthly rent in the U.S. rising sharply last year by as much as 40% in some cities, housing assistance groups in the Quad Cities are working hard to provide aid. Having your housing needs met, like, is really the whole of it. On Wednesday, the groups hosted the Rent It Forward event, educating landlords on how grant money can subsidize costs for the homeless and how to work with these tenants. And build relationships between tenants, agencies, and landlords. But some property owners find it difficult renting to the homeless. They often need to lower prices for low-income renters to qualify for assistance. And the aid only lasts so long. So the biggest concern is that rapid rehousing will only last for up to 12 months. And, and so you have that big accountability piece for like a year. So then after when we leave, you know, people that are used to living in a crisis situation, you revert back to your old ways and what you've known. And so we've heard that from landlords, that the concern is that, like, you know, once you step out, it all kind of can fall apart. And for some landlords, the problems go beyond rent payments. One of the issues is just hygiene. If they've been homeless for a while, their hygiene patterns are not what you want in your apartment or your house or whatever. But overcoming these challenges can make all the difference for the homeless. If you have a place to go that's affordable and safe, you then can give back to your community. So it makes your community more whole and, and better and goes into the businesses, um, too. In Moline, Jonathan Fong, WQAD News 8. And if you know someone in need of housing assistance, you can find more information on our website, WQAD.com. Iowa is still waiting on about $51 million to help rebuild electric vehicle infrastructure along Iowa's interstates. That will come from the federal government. Iowa DOT says that money would be spent on things like installing charging portals along I-80 and 35 and putting more charges in metro areas. A crash on the Illinois side of the I-74 bridge sent four people to the hospital today. Moline police responding to the crash. They tell us the driver of that white car changed lanes, clipping a semi. The semi then hit another car. The collision sent both cars into the center divider. The four people who were taken to the hospital had non-life-threatening injuries. And what a perfect day. Oh, my goodness. Woke I, up this morning. It was nice and cool. Good day for a run. Did you go running? I know you were planning on that. I, I did. And yes. It was one of those mornings where it was cool enough you could just run on and on. Did I? Absolutely not. No, no. Quick run. Yeah. <laughs> James joining us now with uh, more on when we can run again. Interesting adventure. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you got outside. I that, did. That was a good thing. Yeah. It was very refreshing this morning. I took the dogs out around the neighborhood. Take advantage of that nice refreshing start with temperatures actually started off in the 50s even some lower 60s. Uh, a lot of sunshine once again today. You could not find a cloud anywhere. And with that drier place, we're able to quickly warm up those numbers uh, in the 80s, warmer 80s, mainly along and even west of the river. 
at the airport of Moline, 86 degrees. You're actually checking out the high for the day. Dew point temperature around 62 degrees. So the humidity outside has been actually quite tolerable, dry. And that's going to allow that temperature to once again cool off pretty quickly before midnight or around that. We'll already be in the upper 60s. And we'll likely bottom out, I think this time right around 60, though outline areas can actually see temperatures even a few degrees cooler than that. Should set the stage for another warm and dry day. Got some slight little tweaks, so heading to the start of our upcoming Labor Day weekend. I'll show you what those are coming up in just a few minutes. John? Party, thanks, James. We have continuing coverage tonight. An energy infrastructure company is proposing running a carbon capture pipeline through part of Scott County. If approved, the roughly 300-mile-long pipeline would capture carbon dioxide from the two ADM ethanol plants in Cedar Rapids and Clinton. It would be operated by Wolf Carbon Solutions and transported and stored deep underground in central Illinois. Wolf says it will help ethanol companies meet federal and state government requests to limit greenhouse gas emissions, but not all landowners are on board with the project. We don't want it here. Um, just for the fact that I don't believe that it's a, a true thing that's going to solve the um, carbon crisis release from corn plants. Wolf says it wants to work with landowners around the pipeline route. It's hoping the project can be done through voluntary easements instead of the company taking land through eminent domain. The Davenport Fire Department broke ground today on a new station. The new facility will be at Brady Street and Welcome Way. It will replace the current station 3 at 35th and Harrison. Construction is expected to wrap up by the end of next year. The project will cost just over $10 million and modernize the station to accommodate male and female firefighters. So this uh, location will actually get us to move through traffic a little bit easier, which hopefully will reduce our response times uh, so we can get to our emergencies a little bit quicker. The new location will better serve one of the fastest growing areas in Davenport. And this fall, drivers in downtown Davenport might notice construction crews around City Hall. Workers are repairing the clock tower and the building exterior. They're patching cracks, holes, and wear and tear. Construction crews estimate it will cost $500,000. The project is expected to wrap up around November. All right, still ahead, a state of emergency. The systemic issues Mississippi leaders think led to a water crisis. And around. <laughs> it is 549 and we are in the kitchen. Now, when the weather is hotter than Hades, like it has been, no one wants to spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen. So we're going to do a quick, easy, fast Time-saving tuna dish. Okay. It's my go-to. It looks fancy. It tastes gourmet, and no one will be the wiser. Could, would you believe I never had tuna that act like tuna steaks? I, I know. The tuna in my house growing up, we had tuna out of a can, or you didn't have tuna at all. That's what I had, too. So when I sent these gentlemen the picture last night, when I tried this out at home, um, they wrote back and said, oh, is that ham? Well, I wrote back. He knew it was well, that's because we talked about it, but I still. Thought it was, I, I thought it was ham. Anyway, we're having so it's sea, ham. sea ham this yes. morning. All right, Andrew, since you couldn't be bothered to put an apron on, we're going to give you the easy job. You could just uh, pierce this with a fork, throw oh, that the in the microwave for okay. a couple minutes. So that's some broccolini, oh. which is baby broccoli. It's delicious. All right, two minutes. And, David, I'm going to have you make the marinade for the tuna. Oh, this goodness. is going to consist of just a tiny bit of toasted sesame oil, which I will start Ooh. you off with. Cause, okay. you know. Is that plastic going to melt? No. Okay. Making sure. Trust. <laughs> oh, Linda's right. throwing metal in there and it didn't do anything. <laughs> We've got more heat, more humidity on the way, more storms are on the way too, and of course we're going to track those for you coming up. So you mentioned the beast is here. We are yep. surrounded by beasts here this morning. Literally. And it's <laughs> not, it's not Andrew and I. It's... <laughs> Plenty, plenty of cows, and I think they kind of quieted down a little bit since we first got here. They got yeah. all excited, and now they're like, eh. Well, we told we're them, you know, we're later. trying to do a show, if you could just please. Oh, yeah. They're very considerate cows. <laughs> yes. But as we've mentioned, it's the opening day of the Mississippi Valley Fair. In just a few hours, the gates will open to the public. And as we found out last week, there's so much to see and do and eat. Here's a, just a sampling of what you can expect this year. Take a look. Welcome to the Mississippi Valley Fair of Corn Dog Eating Competition. How about a slotted spoon? <laughs> Carol. That'll help release it. Go. Got the nuts, we got the oh. ice cream. 
It looks just like the original. <laughs> the I nuts were never in question. <laughs> well, okay, we have a... Oh, well, I have to taste it, so do it. Go for it. <laughs> what do you do with the chocolate? Does it go on the outside or the inside? You can put it oh, wherever no. you I want. I can put it wherever point. I want. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> Look at my face. Here, David. Is it good? Oh, God. <laughs> Tastes like diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. Oh no. <laughs> well. And there you have it. Mine just this cracked into a million pieces. But guess what? I'm gonna make choco taco nachos. There you I'm go. fancy. Here. I'm starting a new trend. Your hands are a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a preschooler. I look like I needed help in the restroom. Oh, David Michael Bowman. And David Michael Bolt. On that note, I don't know if it's a nailed it or failed it. I think it's a little bit of both. Well, it's a little messy, but you know. As long as it tastes good. It tastes delicious. All right. We're going to clean up and uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. It's so great to see you, the owner of the Quad Cities River and Bandits, and I'm sure that forecast is just music to your ears. Oh, it sure is. It's just a great way to kick off the season, right? Yes. Perfect it's, weather. It's wonderful. And Dave, we have to thank you for graciously opening the ballpark for us this morning. We know it's bright and early, but we so appreciate it, and we love being out here. And we are in this beautiful suite right now, and I think a lot of people, when they hear the word suite, they assume you have to have some sort of corporate connection or that yeah. it's just not accessible to the public, but that's not the case. No, that's not the case at all. You can get a suite for uh, as many as 20 people for as little as $350, Wow! depending on the night of the week that you want. Mm -hmm. And we do those all the time. Family get-togethers, friends getting together celebrating a birthday party, just having a great time. This is where I had my birthday last year. We got filled it with our family, and it was the best way to watch baseball. It, it's just a great Not way to Not that there's celebrate. a bad seat out here. There really isn't, because if you kind of want the... You, you, if you want to feel like you're in your backyard, you've got right field. If you want to sit in the sit in the lawn with your dog, you've got left field. There really is a spot for everyone. You well, want to you watch can... the game from the Ferris wheel, you can do yeah. that. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. Let's talk about the renovations that you guys have done in the off season. You guys have been really, really busy. We have, and I'm so excited to show everybody what they look like. We, the suite level looks completely different. We've eliminated the roof. And uh, and it's now roof's gone. <laughs> roof is just gone. The it's ceiling's a, it, gone. Yeah, the ceiling it is feels gone. a lot taller. Yeah, it's yeah. a fifteen foot room now instead of a seven and a half foot room. Mm -hmm. wow. It's a big difference, mm -hmm. and it's just some of the these enormous ten foot windows. Some of the best views in the entire Quad Cities right here in the ballpark. It's we, a grand space. We know this ballpark is known across the country. Yeah. It's won the awards for it. So how do these renovations kind of compare to other minor league ballparks around the country? Is it making that gap even wider for us? It kind of is. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Inge. The, the other ballparks will go around and say, oh, we're, we're trying to be retro. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they, they have new ballparks that are old looking brick and stuff and they say oh we're trying to be retro we don't have to try to be retro we were built in 1931 we are naturally retro. 91 years ago yeah. we'll be talking about that in just a yeah. little bit no it's 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 just the best ballpark in america it really is. and it really the public is. is going to get to see so many improvements this year but talk about some of the things that are not public facing like specific to the teams and the opponents. yeah so one of the one of the requirements of major league baseball has been to upgrade all of the player facilities so we have now uh, bigger clubhouses on both the home and the visitor side, uh, more space for the coaches, a uh, separate dressing room and, and shower for women coaches, um, a larger trainer space on both sides, a huge new weight room and workout room, a video classroom, mm -hmm. a nutritionist office, a strength and conditioning coach's office. Uh, player dining facilities on both sides, player kitchens on both sides, all the amenities that players can want. We are, we are giving the Kansas City Royals mm -hmm. the simply the best place to develop their future stars. It's amazing. It truly is. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And Probably that's taking. why they're going to want to send their stars right mm -hmm. here to the Quad Cities. As a fan, though, Dave, what can I expect this year? What are you most looking forward to as far as concessions and merch and all of those things this year? So concessions mm -hmm. is interesting, right? <laughs> Concessions, this is my 15th year owning the team, and it's the first year that we're going to run concessions ourselves. Right. We didn't sub it out to somebody else. I guess I never realized that we did that before. We did, and, and, and what that means for our fans is going to be bigger portions 
lower prices. Ooh, love Who doesn't that. love that? <laughs> right? And with the hot dog just keeps getting longer, friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. with, you know, with inflation going up as yeah. fast as it is, like to be able to save a little money, that's a good thing. Important. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, Dave, thanks so much. Stick around. We can't All let right. you leave because we have much more to talk about, many more questions. Well, and I have the keys, so. Well, that's true. <laughs> exactly. This is Time true. is now 636 and still ahead, a trip down memory lane. Yeah, that's right. We talked about this a little bit, but we're going to take a look at the hometown teams that came before the Quad Cities River Bandits and where they ran the bases before this ballpark existed. And a big warm-up still in store for us today. We're tracking temperatures back into the 70s and a whole lot of wind. When this warmth will eventually bring in some showers and some thunderstorms. We're tracking those in your accurate forecast next live from Modern Woodman Park. You're watching Good Morning Quad Cities live at the ballpark.